Hello and welcome to another business class proudly brought to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Remember to download the app, which you can see the link to the download is under the video description below. And um, once you download, do activate your app. Without activating your app, it's not very, very useful to you. Activate to gain full access to all the features and it costs just 500 there. Very, very useful and with that we'll move on today we shall be looking at gravitational field gravitational field and before we can talk about gravitational field we have to first of all define the concept of a field a field is simply a region of space around an object where its effect can be felt that means if we're to take the most common example of fields we can imagine a magnet, if I was to have a magnet here, for a certain region around this magnet, if I bring a nail into that region, you can express attraction between the nail and the magnet. So this field describes the area around that object, which in this case is a magnet, where we can feel the effect of that magnet. Gravitational field, however, has nothing to do with magnetism. Gravitational field is a function of mass. So it's the region around every mass, where this mass can attract other objects. Now, one of the special things about gravitational field is that gravitational field is always attractive. Unlike your magnet, which can attract or repel other magnets, gravitational field always attracts. And the fundamental law to describe how they attract is given by Newton's law of universal gravitation. Newton's law of universal gravitation. And Newton's law simply states that all objects in the universe attract every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. So one more time, all objects in the universe attract each other with a force is proportional to the product of the masses and inverse proportional to the square of the distance apart which gives us this introducing your constant f equals to g m1 m2 over r squared where g is our universal gravitation constant and the value for this is about 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 newton squared meter per squared kilogram and that is it now this law simply tells us that every single object everyone not just planets every object has a gravitational field around them however for typical tiny objects their masses are so small that the gravitational field is very negligible but when it comes to heavenly bodies which are massive like the earth the moon gravitational field is much more noticeable because of the mass and from the state law, action and reaction are equal and opposite, which means as this is the earth, and say this is a human standing on earth, as the earth attracts you to it, you also attract the earth to, it, to yourself with the same force, but in the opposite direction. However, as we've all definitely noticed, the fact that you jump up and you attract the earth doesn't mean you're going to pull the earth up towards you. Instead, the earth is sitting pulling you down. And that's because your mass is actually smaller than that of the earth. You may try to attract the earth, but the earth has a big mass, so you are unable to move it. Your mass as a human is way tinier, so you're actually moved by the earth. However, the force between both of you is equal. The force you are exerting on the earth, and the force the earth is exerting on you. And another name for the force which the Earth exerts on any object within its gravitational field is referred to as weight. So, if you are within the gravitational field of the Earth, you shall experience weight. And um, we typically know that weight equals to mg, mass times acceleration due to gravity. However, what we must remember is that this force between the Earth and the human is equal to g mass of x, mass of the object over r squared, which is the radius of x squared. 
and this we know that this force is equal to the weight that means that mg equals gme that's the mass of earth and mass of object over r e squared radius of earth if m cancels m we know that ascension due to gravity can then be calculated as gravitational constant mass of earth over r e squared now this formula actually functions in a wide range not just for earth to find the gravitational field on any planet all you require is gravitational constant which is always the same the mass of that planet and the radius of the planet and more importantly that tells you that the farther you are from the center of the earth the less weight you feel so see an object at this point this elevation and another at this elevation they begin to express different weights because this distance is greater than this distance and and that key thing to notice here is that the earth is not a perfect sphere the earth has durations some places are mountain tops some are hills some are in the valleys and as such the distance from the from those places to the center is not always the same and therefore while mass is constant your weight actually varies from place to place so weight varies from place to place why mass is constant on any planet but the weight on a certain planet will be different on the weight of that object on different planets as evidenced when you see astronauts on the moon the way they walk is not the way you would walk on it they seem to bounce because the gravitational field on the moon is much smaller than the gravitational field on it and with that, we shall also look at something known as gravitation potential. Gravitation potential. And that is simply the work done moving any mass or unit mass from a certain point using the earth's field to another point. And that formula is minus gm over r. Okay. And then one more key thing to note is something known, very important as escape velocity escape velocity um to launch rockets into space you have to do it in such a way that these rockets do not automatically fall back to it once they get launched they have to be able to maintain their orbits and as such they have to be launched in what we call escape velocity escape velocity is the minimum velocity required for an object to permanently escape the effect of its gravitational field once you move at that velocity, you can actually escape from the effect. The force of gravity seems to lose its hold on you. And that velocity is given by V equals to square root. Let's call it V equal escape velocity. Square root of 2G R E. And with this, there's one key thing you could notice in your jump exam. As long as you are dealing with it, then the radius of it is usually about 6,400 kilometers. Because of this value, the typical value for escape velocity is about 11,300 meters per second or 11.3 kilometers per second. So if you look at your typical exam question in your jam, all you have to check is, is G 9.8 or 10? And is arrow is 6,400? If it is either of those, if those are correct, then there's no need to solve. Escape velocity remains fairly constant as long as you are dealing with those set of parameters and with that in mind we also have to look at our satellites in orbit there are different ways satellites could move you can have satellites moving from a place to place and shall we earth is itself is rotating so you could have a satellite moving turning faster than earth or you could have those that seem to be turning at the same rate as earth and as such they seem to be fixed in a particular spot above the earth any satellite which is fixed in a particular spot above the Earth is said to be in parking orbit. That means they move synchronously with it. As it makes one complete rotation, they too complete one rotation. While those which are moving asynchronous to it, they could move faster than it or slower than it. Okay. And also, we should remember that the force of gravity is what keeps the sun and the eight planets, yes, eight, not nine. So, so gravity is what keeps the sun and the eight planets moving around in orbit. 
the planets move around the sun because of the gravity force of gravity between them and the sun and with this can i try now go to our jump app and pick out questions on that gravitational field and that is one of the cool features of this app that you are probably able to look for questions in the area you want to study particularly instead of just going around and searching randomly so you actually go and search for the keywords and you'll be able to find questions that have to do with the topic you are dealing with so let's start off let's start with one So this is our first example. You can find this in your Jamba app, 1997, question number eight. A planet has mass M1 and is at a distance R from the sun. While a second planet has mass M2 and this M2 equals to 10 M1 and is at a distance R2 equals 2r1 so this is r1 as well from the sun we have to find the ratio of the gravitational forces experienced by the planets so how do we find this ratio it's quite simple we can say we know force of gravity must be gm over gm1 m2 over r squared so now we're going to take our m2 in this case to soon become m representing a random object on both planets so for the first planet which we now have f1 which that this will be g m1 over r1 squared while for the second planet f2 will be g m2 over r2 squared however we're told that m2 is 10 m1 so that'll be g times 10 m1 I know that R2 is 2R1, so that'll be 2R1 squared. So multiplying to become 10 GM1 over 2 squared is 4R1 squared. So into 4 is 2, into 10 is 5. And therefore, we shall know that F1 over F2 equals f1 is gm1 over r1 squared over means divide and f2 is 5 gm1 over 2 r1 squared and as away from your mathematics this simply becomes our division turns to multiplication and this gets turned around 2 r1 squared over 5 gm1 gm1 cancels gm1 r1 squared cancels r1 squared and automatically we can see f1 by f2 equals 2 over 5 and that is our option b see quite easy in our next question in this question we have tried do not even need to calculate 1998 question 5. In freefall, a body of mass 1 kg drops from a height of 125 meters in 5 seconds. How long will it take another body of mass 2 kg to fall from rest from the same height? Now, this question tells us we are dropping two different objects from the same height. How long will it take the second one to fall if the first one falls in 5 seconds now what you must remember what makes you fall down to it what attracts you to it is gravity and the intensity of this attraction is given by acceleration to gravity g of which you know that the average value is 9.8 that implies that every single object no matter the size must fall at this rate which implies if the first object is falling at five seconds the second object must also fall four five seconds and my answer is a now i know some of us now will be saying but if i drop a needle and a stone or a stone and a feather they don't fall at the same rate what makes them fall differently in nature actually is air resistance your feather 
sort of rides the air current to fall while your stone drops straight. If you want to test this theory, you can drop a stone and the needle. Because of the shape of the needle, it is perfectly capable of tearing through the air, so it feels little to no resistance. Even if the stone is heavier, the stone and the needle land together. Okay. All right. We are trying the next question. Now, this one states, if the distance between two suspended masses of 10 kg each, masses are 10 kg each, is tripled, if the distance between them is tripled, the gravitational force is reduced by 2002, question 7. If the distance between two suspended masses of 10 kg is tripled, the gravitational force of attraction between them is reduced by. This is very, very simple. All you have to remember is my distance gets tripled. And tripled simply means times 3. Now, if my distance is tripled, looking at your formula as we've had here, you can notice what happens to my distance gets squared. So if this is tripled, I have to square this. And that gives me what? 9. And therefore, the force is reduced by 1 ninth. Option D. Now, assuming the mass had been altered as well, they would have had to do quite a bit of solving. But since just the distance gets tripled, there is no need to bother. Simply, anything that happens to the distance, you must square that magnitude. Ergo, you square 3 and you get 9. And that is all. Okay? Alright, so question 4. Question 4, we are getting this from 2010. Question 6, as you can see in your app. This question states, an object is weighed at different locations on it. What will be the right observation? Similar objects weighed at different locations. Option A, both the mass and weight vary. As we've learned previously, mass is always constant and weight changes because G changes from place to place, which means that Automatically, we must know our answer is C. Mass is constant and weight varies. No calculation, just have to think a little bit. Then, for the next one, we are told the radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 meters. The radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 meters. We have to find the escape velocity. Now, if you recall what I said in my explanation, once you see that this your radius is this normal value, there's literally no need to solve. Your answer must be 11,300 meters per second, which in your options, when put in standard form, gives us 1.13 times 10 to the power 4 meters per second. It's that simple. However, just to show our working, we'll say the velocity becomes square root of 2GRE. And that will be square root of 2 times 10 times 6. Putting this into normal form so we can put it to our jam calculator, that will be 6400000. So if you press this into your calculator as allowed you by jam, you obtain that will be 2 times 10 times 6400. And then we add the extra zeros. That will be 1, 2, 8 with 6 zeros. And once I find my square root, that gives me 11313.7085. And as you can see, if I'm to approximate this based on my options, my closest answer must be 1.13 times 10. I'm moving the point backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 to power 4 meters per second. And that stands. So there's literally almost no need to solve for escape velocity in most cases. Because as long as RE is this and G is 10, your answer must fall within this range. Unless the question then has maybe something specific like this and numbers that are close, then you may want to get the exact value. Okay, and um, let's solve one more. 
All right, and now moving on to question number five. Question five. We are told the Earth is four times the size of the Moon. When you hear about size, you think about the dimensions. That means the radius of Earth equals to four times the radius of the Moon. And the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, as GE, is 80 times that on the Moon, GM. We are being asked right now to find the ratio of the mass of the moon to that of X. Mass of moon over mass of X. Now, to solve this question, we have to ask ourselves, what typical formula are we aware of that connects G, M, and R? I know that G equals to big G, M over R squared. So, G on X must be equal to big G, mass of X, over r e squared okay now if you want to make this a little bit easier we could decide to actually express everything in terms of m since we are going to be looking for ratio of m that will mean that m equals g r squared over big g and since we know big g will be the same in both situations i can just get rid of it entirely i know i'm going to be comparing that m m over m e equals to G M R M squared over G E R E squared. And what's G M? G M can simply be stated the way it is times R M squared. But G E is equals to 80 G M. I can place this G E with 80 G M and R E is 4 R M. So place this R E with 4 R M. But don't forget, everything gets squared. Squared. So that will be G M R M squared over 80 G M times 4 squared is 16 R M squared. These cancel out and these cancel out. So that gives me 1 over. 80 times 16 which quite simply we can check on our calculator 80 times 16 is 1280 so our answer is answer b yeah and with that we've come to an end of our topic on gravitational field thank you for listening and remember download your three schools app it will help you greatly my name is Athanasius. Thank you again.